Hey everyone, this is a clip from my most recent news roundup where I discuss and break down whatever's going on over there at Paramount. And I also get into a little bit of streaming versus theaters and why streaming is detrimental and is removing the incentive for studios to make quality films. The link to the original video this clip comes from will be in the description, so be sure to check that out and hope you enjoy it. Here's the clip. Okay, so our second kind of main topic for today is uh, Paramount Pictures. So you may have seen all the articles about this person's fired, this person's fired, uncertainty in Paramount Pictures, and wondered what is going on over there because there's a big shakeup happening there and I wanted to discuss it. This is just another big shakeup. You've got Disney Fox merging. You've got Bob Chapek taking over Bob Iger. You've got like Warner Brothers and Discovery will be merging soon. All this crazy stuff is happening. And uh, this is just another example of that. The film industry is changing. It's shifting. So I'm going to go through, give you all the facts, let you know what's happening inside Paramount Studios right now, Paramount Pictures. And, um, and that's pretty much it. So this all started a few weeks ago when it was announced that the Paramount Pictures CEO and chairman... Jim Giannopoulos, I believe is how you pronounce it, would hand over control of the studio to Brian Robbins. Uh, Brian Robbins was the head of Nickelodeon, and he's going to retain that job as well as take on the added role of president and CEO of Paramount. This change in leadership has caused some crazy shakeups inside Paramount that is eerily reminiscent of what we heard from Disney when Bob Chapek took over from Bob Iger. And you all know my feelings about that situation. So like all the major studios, it seems that Robin's priority is streaming. In the weeks following his promotion, it's been revealed that Emma Watts has been dismissed from Paramount Pictures. If you don't know, Emma Watts joined Paramount last summer and she became known as the studio's white knight. She threw herself into her work and she became committed to saving Paramount's decreasing theatrical power because over the last few years, Paramount has been losing more and more market share in the box office to Disney, to all the other studios. Um, so when Emma Watts was hired, she immediately threw herself in her work. She began working to revive several of Paramount's major franchises, including Star Trek and Transformers. We're gonna see the effects of her hard work in 2022 when many of the movies she put into production are released. And there's a ton of stuff coming that directly come from her. She quickly built an amazing reputation and became known as the person who was gonna save Paramount because it had been in a really steady decline over the years, uh, losing its foothold in the theatrical market. She was known to be extremely committed to the theatrical experience, and her dismissal, as Variety puts it, uh, is further evidence that Paramount is shifting its focus away from the theatrical market. And um, one example of that is when our new CEO, Paramount's new CEO, Brian Robbins, according to Variety, he was touting this Paw Patrol movie that just came out, as the future, he was he was praising this Paw Patrol movie because it was put on Paramount Plus and it was put in theaters on the same day and it made a lot of money in theaters. He basically was very happy with that because it was a low budget movie that had a high return for them. And clearly, like all the other studios, like we talked about with Bob Chapek, quality is no longer the primary concern. It never was. It was always about money, but even more now. Low budget, high reward. That's what the priority is. The priority has shifted even further away from making quality movies. And we're going to be seeing the effects of that in five years. So back to Emma Watts, her abrupt departure from Paramount shocked many inside and has increased the feelings of anxiety and uncertainty within the company. According to insiders, everybody in the company is on edge waiting for the next high profile firing or unceremonious dismissal. Uh, one insider said, quote, the lack of communication is stunning. Robbins has only met briefly with department heads since taking over for Giannopoulos, and there has been a lack of written or verbal communication, which is extremely abnormal for a leadership change of this magnitude. Nobody in Paramount right now knows what's going on, who's going to be fired, and who's going to be fired next. There's complaints among the staff that Robbins has not shared his vision of what Paramount looks like moving forward let alone what other executives might be shown the door, might be fired. Um, so this is what we know. We know that right now, Paramount Pictures is a mess. Inside of it, nobody knows what's going on. Everyone's waiting for the next firing. Um, this sounds very similar to what was going on with Disney when Bob Chapek took over. And this is just another prime example 
of how the industry is changing to focus on streaming. And by the very nature of streaming, it's about getting eyeballs. For theaters, here's the difference. For theaters, there was an incentive to make a good movie because when you make a good movie in the theaters, people are more likely to go pay for that movie because they hear good word of mouth. They want to go see a good movie. But purely because of the convenience of streaming, even if the movie is known to be a bad movie, even if it's just a mediocre movie, even if it's like uh, looks like a bad movie, people will still watch it on streaming, but they wouldn't necessarily pay tickets for it. So there's plenty of bad movies with big stars that get tons of views on streaming, mid-budget movies, even like perfect example, that horrible new Netflix movie that came out with Addison Ray. If that were in theaters, it would bomb. It would tank so badly. But Netflix is incentivized to make more bad movies like that. They just put a big popular TikTok girl in it. It'll get millions of views, break records, and it'll do well for them. They can say to the investors, our new movie made, had this many views. It broke this record. Stock prices go up. That's just how it works with streaming. The incentive to make good movies is it might still be there a little bit, but it's so, so small. And it's just not a part of the equation anymore to the same extent that it used to be. So I think this is a really bad sign for the industry. I think streaming, I love streaming, but I think theaters need to stay around, need to stick around. And I think um, not to be too negative, but I think same in the same way we talked about with Disney, I think this does not look good for the future of Paramount. We'll see how this all turns out. If anything changes, if this ends up having an effect on the quality of the movies, but, uh, but it's very interesting. So let me know what you thought of this topic. So that's the clip. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Thanks for watching this. Remember, if you'd like to watch the full original news roundup, the link for that is in the description. Thanks for listening and have a good day.